Hey, I hope everybody's having a good day. We're going to do a different kind of video today. This is about the User Spice API Builder. And I've been given a challenge to give kind of an example of how you would do something like, let's say you have an app. And every time someone creates an, an account on that app, you want an account created in your user spice. Like let's pretend that this is your back office application. So somebody creates an account one place, you want them to have an account somewhere else. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna use the user spice API builder. So we're gonna go to the dashboard and there's other videos on how to install user spice. There'll be another video that's kind of a complete tour of how the API builder works. So in this situation, the main thing I want to do is I want to show you how I walk through this process and there's there's a bunch of different ways to do it but I want to kind of give you uh, some of the thoughts behind how to create something like this so we're gonna to go to Spice Shaker and I already have my API key installed uh, Spice Shaker if you're on user spice 4 would be a plugin but in this situation it's just installed in here in user spice 5 so I can just come here and search for API <coughs> excuse me and I'm gonna get the API builder builder version 1.0 so I'm gonna install it and then for security reasons, we don't auto run the install.php file. So I'm going to click here on install and activate. And now I have the API builder. So I can either come in here and click run API builder, or if I'm on user spice five, I can get to that same thing from this little add ons tab over here. So we're going to do that. When you start the API builder, it is in mode, it says zero, but I guess it's technically one all the APIs are disabled. That was my fault. I did that in the database. Uh, all the APIs are disabled. And so nothing can really happen at this point. So what we want to do again, let, let's stop and think for a second. We're trying to create an API where one server, let's say the app server can talk to another server, which in this situation is the user spy server. So that, <clears throat> excuse me in that situation we basically we don't need every single one of our user spice users to have their own api key we just need one key for that other server so we're going to put the api builder in mode two which means that there's a pool of api keys so by default we don't have any keys so let's go ahead and generate one key for our new server so we have this new key here and now we're able to use this key with the API. So we're going to say, uh, I didn't put a description in there, but that's fine. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to use this one key and manage the, the whole process with this key. So, all right. Now what we need to do, I have some examples and let's, let's do a little bit of testing. So if you come here into the API builder, there's some examples. And I guess the first one is, is, pretty good. They're all commented out and that's for security purposes. Um, but there's this API here called auth only. And basically we want to check, can we authenticate? So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to comment all this code in and all this thing is going to do is authenticate or not authenticate. So <clears throat> to test, it shows that we want to make a call that looks something like this. Now to test an API, we're going to use a program called Postman. And I thought I had it open somewhere, but I guess I don't. All right, so Postman. And that should be loading on another screen somewhere. Here we go. It takes a second to load. So, okay, I have this over here. And I want to make a request. And so we're going to just call it test. Okay, so actually, let's cancel out of all that. So what I want to do is I want to come here and I want to change this from get to post. And then if you look at my example, I'm going to snap to the side here. My example is <clears throat> that the, the call should look something like this. So I'm going to drag this and I'm going to put this in the body. And let's see here. And I'm going to change this to raw. And now I can paste that in there. Now the problem is my key is wrong. So what I want to do is I want to grab my real key that I just generated and I want to put that in Postman. So we're going to replace the example key with the real key that we just generated. And now it tells you that where to make that request. So in our situation, my user spice is installed in the US5 folder. So we're going to grab this and we're going to take this file right here and I'm going to put it here. So 
I'm going to make an API request to localhost US5 user C plugins API builder examples and it doesn't really matter where you put these but this is this is where I have it for now so I'm going to make a request and you're going to see that I get a response saying that success is true and the validation type I used was a key pool and you'll remember that when I set the, <clears throat> excuse me when I set this up that I had, uh, I'm not logged in on that one. When I set this one up, I said that I wanted to have a pool of keys. So my authentication type was a key pool and user ID was zero. There was no user ID attached to that key and there's no description going on. So what we've basically proven is that we can authenticate and we'll prove that that's true by changing this eight at the end to a seven. And so if I refresh this, then basically I get nothing. And you can do whatever you want. You can pass an error message but I tend to do no response at all for a bad query. That's just how I do it. So anyway, we can come back over here and we can, uh, instead of, I'll tell you what, let's, let's duplicate this file so we'll have it. And then we're gonna call this one uh, create user like this. Okay, and then I'm gonna go back to the auth only and I'm gonna comment everything back out there so that we don't have to open up API. So, okay, so we have create users. So let me explain what happens here. <clears throat> so from our perspective, the user spice API manager does a lot of things like this one auth and sanitize line. Basically what this does is this makes sure that whatever key was passed and whatever IP it came from matches the rules that you set up in the user spice API uh, thing and then it returns this variable called data so what we're gonna do just for a test we're gonna dump the variable data and so I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna snap this back to the left and I'm gonna make this same API call with the right information and you can see let's see here do I have the right one there oh okay so we need to go to the new create user API So you'll see that basically what, what we passed was the key and so that's available in this in this uh, array called data. So if I were to come in here and put data key then and save that, then when I pass it back, it's gonna be just the string of the key. So what's important though, is that this is not just the information that was passed from the API call. This is the information after it's been sanitized to make sure that there's nothing in it that would cause SQL injections and things like that. So we ran it through the through the sanitization function. So now what we want to look at is how to actually build the API itself. So we've been able to authenticate and we have some data, but now we want to create a user. So let's take a look here. <coughs> Excuse me. So the first thing I want to know is let's let's walk through the process as if I don't know anything about user spice. So if I come here and let's bring up the program. All right, let's bring up user spice and let's log out for a second. So if I go to register, then what I need is a username, a first name, a last name, an email, a password and you know you can do whatever you want with terms and conditions so these are the fields that we need so let's start breaking this down and i'm gonna come over here to we'll give ourselves an example call i like to always have an example call here so uh, let's do it like this let's do we'll break this out so let's say key let's get our key right we're gonna put the the valid key in here while we're while we're demoing so I'm gonna grab this and grab this okay so what we want is our key and then we need a username and then we're gonna just call that Dan and we need a let's see we need a um, first name and we're gonna call that Dan. I'll tell you what, let's put, uh, we'll put Danny just for the heck of it. And there's a reason for that. It's because by default you can't have three 
uh, three word, three letter usernames with user spice. So we're gonna do that. So we're gonna put uh, Danny F name, and then we'll put L name, Hoover, and then we're gonna put email Bob at AOL.com who gets all my spam. And then we're gonna put a password, super secure. We're gonna do password. And I think that's about it. If we go back to that join form. Oh, yep, yep, that's it. So basically, here's where we have some decisions to make. So this is your API. You can do this wherever you want. So you can choose to validate this information on the app side, or you could validate it on the user spy side. So we'll kind of look at both of those options. So the first thing I want you to see is if I were to, I'm going to copy this and then I'm going to comment it in or out. So now when I paste this in here and I do the same dump data, you're going to see that even though this API did not request all this information, it's, let's see, what did I do there? I must have missed one. I don't, maybe that can't have a, oh, I didn't have a comma here. So we're going to add that comma. We're going to add that comma. And then just for the heck of it, we're going to get rid of this comma. Okay. So we're going to save this and we're going to send it again. Okay. So now you'll see that even though we didn't ask for this information, the API was able to handle it and was able to sanitize it and stuff like that. And so great. We have the information. So now what we want to do is we want to look at the join.php page. <clears throat> Excuse me, got a cough today. So we're gonna go to users and we're gonna go to join.php and you'll see that when we come here uh, that basically at this point, this is what user spice is doing to create the user. So we're gonna just start grabbing all this stuff and we'll edit it back out. But we are going to, there's a lot of code. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. This is not a, uh, a simple, a simple thing here. So we're going to grab, it may not be right, but we're just going to grab that and we're going to start there. So we're going to do a little bit of time. So we come to the create user API and let's just make a bunch of space and we're going to go full screen here. So the first thing I want to know before we do anything with this, let's, let's get rid of that. Let's find out, do we have access to the settings? Um, so we're going to say dump settings. And the reason for that is settings is where we have all of the, um, you know, all of the, the minimum username, minimum, all that kind of stuff. So we're going to dump settings. So undefined variable settings. Okay. So we know that we need to get settings so that we can have minimum username and password and stuff like that. So, all right, we're going to do settings equals db query select oops, star from settings and then first. And what that's going to do is that's going to give us all of our, um, and we can dump it just to, to make sure it works, but that's going to give us all of our settings like, you know, what what do we need for a username, password, all that kind of stuff. We could be a little bit more specific and not select star, but just for these purposes, we're going to, have to do that. So we're going to go over to join.php and we're going to try to make this as simple as possible. So we're going to forget all of this stuff up top and we basically want to know, we're going to work backwards. We want to know what happens if someone gets a, uh, if someone passes the validation. So let's look at, this so if we start here so if the captcha is valid and everything like that then we have this add the user to the database so we're gonna grab this stuff and we're just gonna uh, let's see here we're gonna grab all of this this try statement this catch statement okay I think that's good all right so we're gonna start with that so let's paste this in here and we're going to simplify this a little bit. So what do we want to know? Let's come back to join. Let's do a little bit of validation. And there's a couple things we want to make sure. We want to make sure 
that the password is the right number of letters and the username is the right number of letters and that none of them are blank. So let's do a little, instead of going through all this stuff, let's do a little bit of quick validation. So let's say, let's do a, a variable here. We're gonna call failed equals zero. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna run some checks. And so we're gonna say if, we wanna count the number of characters. So we wanna say if str len, string length, um, of data username is less than, and let's look what variable we had here, uh, settings min username, or, hold on, uh, string link, yep, hold on, we wanna get this out of here. Let's, Again, I'm doing this on the fly. So if it's less than the minimum username length or string length username is greater than max username length, then we're gonna put, we're gonna go ahead and do, we'll do, we'll break these out. So then we'll say failed equals one all right and then we can put let's do a message let's do a message equals empty array and then we're gonna say I'll tell you what, let's do this let's do return equals empty array and then we're gonna say return equals invalid username now I don't know that we're really going to return this but we're going to do it anyway we'll put we'll just have that there so then we're going to copy this same thing and we want to do the same thing for the password so we're going to come in here and do password and then instead of settings min username or un we're going to put pw because that is the variable that we're getting right here so if the password length is less than the minimum or greater than the maximum failed equals one invalid password great so that takes care of those ones and then now what we want to see we want to make sure that the uh um first name and last name are at least one character so let's say if uh we want to make sure there's something there let's just say that if data F name equals equals eh, or and there's a lot of different ways to do this check but we're just gonna we're gonna do it real simple uh, and then we're gonna say failed equals one invalid first last name Great, so basically what we've done, we've made sure that there's something in the first name, something in the last name, that the password is the appropriate length and that the uh, username is the appropriate length. So the last thing we wanna check, and well, I guess, and we should do the same thing with the email. Um, let's just, we'll be lazy. Eh, let's do it this way. So we're gonna go one more. Uh, email. Again, I can't say how enough, how many different ways there are to do what we're trying to do, but we're, we're I wanna do it in a really logical way that, that just should be easy to understand what's going on here. So we wanna make sure the email, and, and we, we can say replace this, a real email check, and we can you can do whatever you want there. So we have the email, we have all this other stuff. So now the only other thing we wanna know is, is the username or the email already taken? So let's do a quick uh, let's do a quick query. So we're going to put check equals db query select id from users where username equals question mark or email equals question mark, and then we're going to pass those variables in as 
bound. So we're going to say data username and then data email. And then we just need to know the count. We need to know if there's something where the email or the username is already exists. And so we're going to say if check is greater than zero, then failed equals one. And we're going to say username email already in use. Again, being lazy here, we could do more detailed checks. So let's assume that we passed all those things. And so we're going to say if failed equals equals zero. So in other words, if none of those things tripped up our checks, then we're going to just put this in here. Just a reminder of what we're doing down here. <coughs> Excuse me. So what we have is we're going to go through the normal process of creating a user. So we're going to create a new user variable. And instead of these, what we're going to do is we're going to say data F name. Let's see here. params. Okay. So this is for sending out an email. We're not going to send out emails. So let's get rid of all this. Boom. All right, so we're going to try to create a user and we're gonna change this to data username. And I'm gonna copy this and then we're gonna say you see first data. We're gonna automatically capitalize that uh, F name. L name email. We're going to encrypt the password, and so we're going to go data password, and we're going to give them, let's see, email verified. We're going to just say one on this one right now. Vericode. Let's uh, let's create a new. Let's see, so I think I just deleted those. So Vericode. So we have Vericode expiry here. Where is Vericode coming from? Okay, so Vericode is random string 15. So we'll just put that right here. And then Vericode expiry. is settings let's see right here let's get rid of that okay so those are the things that we would need to create a user the initial user thing so we're gonna get rid of this we're not doing any hooks uh, we're not doing a try catch statement so we can get rid of this and so right now what this would do is this would create a basic user by giving them some information but a few more things need to happen so we're gonna come in here to join and we're gonna follow this logic so the try statement so forget about two-factor authentication we're not doing that so what we're going to do we have a script and if you've never seen this if you go to user c scripts during user creation what happens over here is user c scripts during user creation basically if you want anything to happen every single time someone creates a user whether you create them in the back end or they log in and join manually or you're using the API like this is you can put whatever you want in here and so we don't want to lose that so we're gonna we're gonna add this thing right here and we're gonna say to include that script because we don't want a different user creation experience from joining somewhere else now the only thing is you don't want to redirect anywhere around in there that could cause problems but anyway good enough so now we're gonna go back to join and see what else join.php does. 
So, let's see here. So if we come down to where we were including that script. So we included the script. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna log the fact that we created a user, just so we have the same log that we have for everybody else. And then we're gonna say via API. And then this way we have a list of all the users who were created via the API. And then that looks like about all that needs to happen. I don't really see anything else on this page that has to happen. So <clears throat> if we did that right, which again, there's a lot of stuff going on there. So if failed equals, all right. So then what we're going to do, um, let's say that at this point we want to create a new variable. So let's say, all right, let's say return, and then we're going to say success equals true. So if this created, we're going to say it was true, and then return message equals user new user created. And then we're going to say return ID. We're going to give you the user ID in case you need to link that in the other application. So we're going to say the new user or the new ID. And then we're going to say, I don't usually do this, but we're going to say else. We're going to take these same things and we're going to say false. We already have the message above it. And we're going to make the ID null. And so what would happen is basically if you create if you creates it and it works out well, it's going to say new user created and give you the ID back. Otherwise, it's going to say false. You'll get the error message from up here and you're going to return null for the idea ID. So what we can do now if you'll notice we gave this uh, let's see here so what we want to do so the only other thing I want to say is I'm fine returning a result if the authorization was successful but if the authorization wasn't successful, we don't want to return anything. So what I want to do, we want to do one last test. Let's comment all this out for a second. And we're going to dump off one more time. Or actually, we're just going to let it give us the auth statement. So if I come here and refresh, the auth is success equals true. So what I want is if you are able to authenticate, then I want it to return something. So if that makes sense, so let's come back here. So I'm going to comment all this back in. Okay. So what I want to say is if auth success equals equals true, then echo json encode return and so what this is going to do is if it, if you were able to log in like in other words if you pass this thing then you'll get a response so whether if you if you have the right key but there's something wrong with your username something wrong with the password you'll get a response but if you have the wrong key you're not going to get any response at all. So again, this is off the top of my head, but we're just going to try it and we're going to see what happens. So we have this user and okay, parse error. That, that was pretty expected. So, all right, line 48, there's an unexpected double arrow. So let's take a look at that. Probably meant I forgot a comma. Uh, 48. So, all right, data password true.
So somewhere we're missing a parenthesis. So the data cost is right. Password hash. I think it's an extra parenthesis. Let's try that. Password hash. It's not an extra parenthesis. Let's take a look at the, at the original line rather than try to spend a lot of time figuring it out. Uh, so, okay, so input get password. So, yeah, I think there's an extra password or an extra parenthesis. Let's try that. I don't feel super confident about that. Okay, assignments can only be writable. Uh, line 13, let's take a look at that. Oops, so this should be, okay, this should be, uh, I made a variable here called return. You guys probably saw this the whole way, but every one of these things needs to be called a return with a variable not. I probably should have called it response, but I didn't, so we're stuck with it now. Okay, let's try saving that. Undefined offset zero on line. Okay, this one's a little harder. Uh, und unknown column zero in field list on. Uh, okay, so let me get back to you on this one. Okay, something just felt wrong about this line and it was wrong. Um, I haven't actually tried to see if this whole thing will work, but I, I updated this line to deal with the data password. So if we come back here to the API, uh, the Postman thing, if I hit send, then I get success is true, and the message is new user created ID equals five. So, you know, we should have created a user with a username of Danny and a password of password. So let's try that. Let's come over here and log in. And we're going to say Danny. Okay. And boom, we're able to log in. So we've created an actual user spice user. And uh, if I come over here to the database and browse, you'll see that I have a user five, the email address, the passwords encrypted in here, first name, last name. And basically this person has all of the uh, rights as a regular user. So there's really no limit to what you can do with this thing. And in fact, we'll just to, just to show you, we'll go over here and I'll log out and I'll log back in as admin. So, I mean, they're gonna show up in the users as if they were any other user. You can change their password. If we go to the, let's see here, uh, logs system logs if we go here to the logs you can see that registration was completed via the api and so i mean you know it it took a little bit of time but overall it's it's pretty sweet so now if we were to come back here to the add-ons uh, and go to the api builder so what we would do now is right now we're we're not checking this but let's say we would switch to mode three and then, so then what we could do, I knew there was a thing over here. I gotta, I gotta make that clickable. Um, what we could do is you would actually put the address of the server that you want to be able to contact, that you want to be able to use the API. So basically, you know, if it was, if it was 8.8.8.8, .8 then, you know, you would do that. And then, so now if I come over here, since we're in mode three and try to do the same API call, I get no response because as far as it's concerned, this API key is not valid from my 127.001 email address. And so just, just to also show you on the other part, or sorry, IP address, just to show you on this, if we change this back to 127 and then send it, we're going to get the error that the username or email is already in use and success was false. So we got a response because we sent a valid API request from a valid IP address, but the data that we gave it was wrong. So again, this is a, a very kind of hurried debugging with Dan style 
just walk through. Like I had never done it before. This is how I would do it. But if you know, if I were to come back and say, I would come in here and maybe do some tests that are a little bit more to your liking and 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 give better responses and things like that. But overall, like we just showed that we were able to make an API where you could create a user, but you have to have the right API key. You have to be coming from the right address the only other thing i would say is if you're on the same server it doesn't matter but if you are coming from like let's say if your user spice is on one server and the other thing the application creating it is on another one then you definitely want to uh force https and so i don't know if that'll fail on 127 yeah so we're good there but if you were you're fine on 127 but if you were to try to go from one server to another you would want it to have to be https or it would fail so uh anyway that is about a half hour of how to make a user creation api using the user spice api builder hope you enjoyed it